this over. I'm Lori Johnson. I am a tenure track associate professor of law in the William S. Boyd School of Law. And I, of course, being a lawyer, came up with a much more discreet answer to the uh, student engagement question than the broad ranging <laughs> answers of our <laughs> humanities and, and sciences folks. Uh, but I think everything I have to say really relates to everything we've heard um, so far. In the law school, I teach uh, primarily two different uh, subjects. The first is legal writing. Uh, that's my primary area. Those courses are around 20 students, between 16 and 20, now closer to 2022. And then in legal ethics, uh, or what we call professional responsibility, I can have up to 85. So we're not all that small in the law school uh, anymore. So we have 85 students in that class. So one strategy that I try to implement in both classes for purposes of student engagement is real-time formative assessment. And this speaks to, I think, a lot of what uh, the other panelists have spoken about thus far, because I found that the students drive to succeed, their desire to do well in the course, to gain the knowledge and do well on the exam, uh, translates into them being very, very active and involved when they're presented with formative assessment tools that are instantly answered, right? Instantly uh, provided with the feedback about the answer that they've had. And so I have been over the past couple of years striving to find appropriate tools and strategies for uh, finding formative assessment methods that work in both the large classroom setting and the smaller classroom setting. In my large classroom, I have found that in-class polling, instant feedback from in-class polling, is a really helpful way to test the student's uh, learning on a particular topic that we're covering. It's wonderful because it doesn't just reach the A-plus student who has the right answer. And then I hear the correct answer, and I think the whole class is on track, and we move on to the next topic. If I use an in-class polling feature that has instant feedback, uh, and I'll talk about which ones are available in a moment, if I use that, I can see only 62% of the class chose the correct answer. 25% chose the distractor, and I'm not a math major, five more percent <laughs> chose the completely incorrect response. So I can really speak to that 25% and 5%, particularly with regard to a distractor answer. Uh, so my professional responsibility ethics class, I test part multiple choice and part essay. So for the multiple choice questions, we can really dig into why was a distractor answer chosen by 30% of this class? And I don't have to identify who chose that distractor answer. I set my polling software to anonymous, but I still get very high rates of participation from the students because they want to see how they stack up, uh, whether they're coming out uh, with the correct answer or not. It also helps me uh, in, we all have to think about uh, our, our, our own course prep. It helps me prep for my exams. It helps me see which uh, which questions are maybe too easy, uh, where we're getting an 80 or 90% correct rate, and I can adjust my exam questions appropriately. Uh, so it also helps me plan ahead. But it really helps me cater that lecture and that discussion to the weaknesses I'm seeing in the class uh, instantly. So I can go back, discuss why distractor answer was incorrect, and then move forward into a new topic when I know that that 30% of the class has hopefully caught up. Uh, I have used a mobile polling technology so they can use their mobile phones or laptops to do so. We had had clickers in the past. You might have some experience with those. The students have to buy them or rent them, and then you have to embed some weird clicker software into your presentation. Um, these mobile apps are so easy. The one I use is Poll Everywhere. There's Socrative, Mentimeter, Wedgies. Kahoot is a more game-based option. Um, SMS Poll which is a more business-based option. And I have a handout on this um, uh, that I presented two years ago at the um, Teaching Expo. But I found that Poll Everywhere works really well for me. The problem is it's free up to 40 students. After 40 students, you have to buy a subscription. I have converted enough folks in the law school to using it that we feel justified in the expense within the law school for our, uh, our college-wide um, uh, uh, subscription. But the great thing about it is it has different features. I primarily use that multiple choice feature. They respond on their cell phone. They all have them. You can't even, they can't even pretend that they don't. They can also respond on a laptop if they're using one. But the great thing is, I know many of us are moving away from permitting laptop in the classroom because of distraction. The cell phone, they can pull it out, click their answer, hopefully put it back away and continue on with the lecture. I'll do two or three questions throughout the course of the lecture. Um, 
And in that large classroom, I've tried the parent share activities, tried the small group activities, and my concern is always the same. Are they on topic? Are they on task? And with a large group, it's hard for me to monitor that in the way I can in my smaller group. This way I know they're on task because they're responding to the particular question. Um, it's very popular with the students. My, uh, I did an informal poll the first time I used it of my 85 person class and I got comments uh, from students that were very positive. I really enjoyed seeing what the correct answer is. I enjoy that she addresses um, the people who might have had the incorrect response. I found it very easy to use. One other feature that at least Poll Everywhere has is a more open response feature, which is also a really nice um, tool, even in a small class, perhaps. If you've got a shy class, I know every once in a while, if you've got that small class and they're a quiet lunch, it can be hard to get them talking. Using anonymous open response, uh, the open response feature is a nice way to get them talking about a topic. They can throw ideas. They're typically one word responses up on and they make a word cloud and the you know, the most common response gets bigger and bigger and smaller and smaller, and they can see that happening. Uh, but it's also nice to open up discussion about sensitive topics, which we do have in the law, uh, politically sensitive, socially sensitive issues. They can throw up a response completely anonymously to generate discussion. I ask things like, how are lawyers perceived in popular media? And the answers are not always positive, right? But we can see that word cloud uh, and, you know, the greedy gets bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> as we go through that. So it's wonderful. It keeps them engaged because they never know when that multiple choice question is going to pop up and they want to be able to respond so they can prepare for the exam, but also it becomes a competitive thing. Like, hey, oh, you got B, right? Um, and so that's great. In my small class, I haven't found, I don't, in legal writing, of course, it's not multiple choice. It's based on written documents, uh, prose and drafts. The instant formative assessment tool I've used there with the most success is live critiquing. So when I have students write drafts, uh, typically those drafts are not for a grade or they're for a small participation portion of the grade. They're going to revise those into their final product rather than give them written comments written on the piece of paper. Uh, so there's this delay, they get the, the comments, they can't remember what they really wrote, they read the comments, they don't understand them, they come back to me, they ask the question again. Instead, I've started doing live critique where I set up a half an hour appointment with each student. Of course, I have 20 students, so this is labor intensive. Uh, and you can't really do it all that quickly, uh, but they will come in, we will sit side by side, each with a copy of the paper, and it will be literally my first look, live critiquing, providing them comments. Uh, some of my colleagues in the law school at Widener University did some research on this, and they found that it makes happy professors and happy students, because it permits professors to tailor feedback to what students are ready to receive, clarify feedback instantly when the student doesn't understand. So if I say, why wasn't there a thesis sentence here? I don't know. Well, why do we think there should have been? What is this paragraph about? I can give them that instant, um, that instant formative assessment. Uh, also, it permits for a conversation. So when I say, I'm confused by this passage, I get a response. Well, I was trying to express this. Let's talk about some ways that could have been done better. Right? I can hear them. It gives them voice in the process. It's not a, a you versus me. It's a you and me coming together for a final product. It gets them engaged, it makes them feel heard, and it's really, really helpful. I have a copy of that article from uh, Widener University Law School as well, if you want to link to that, but it has uh, permitted me to address gaps also in my teaching. So when we come back to class, we can talk about those um, common issues that I saw in live critique. So those are just two strategies I've had for instant formative assessment that have really engaged my students. 